This is part 3 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is a CDN, advantages and disadvantages of loading jQuery from CDN. What if the required jQuery file cannot be loaded from CDN? So what is a CDN? CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. A CDN is a system of distributed servers that host resources such as images, CSS, JavaScript files, etc. Companies like Microsoft, Google, Yahoo, have a free public CDN from which we can load jQuery instead of hosting it on our own web server. Here we have the URLs for Microsoft and Google jQuery CDN. I'll have these links available on my blog in case you need them. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. This is the same example that we have been working with in parts 1 and 2 of this video series. Notice within our application we have a jQuery file and on this page the script element is referencing this jQuery file. So at the moment our application is using the jQuery file that is hosted within our own application. Now we can also load the jQuery file from a CDN server. In a bit we'll discuss the benefits of loading the jQuery file from a CDN server. For now let's go ahead and comment the script element, save the changes and let's reload this page. Now when we get to developer tools we should see a script error notice that we get a script error which says dollar is not defined so basically this is complaining that this dollar function is not defined and that is because we don't have the jQuery file loaded now let's see how to load the jQuery file from the CDN server so here is the URL for Microsoft CDN and here is that page on this page we have a link which says jQuery releases on the CDN, click on that link and notice we have different jQuery versions here. So let's grab this latest version of the jQuery file and within our page let's use script element script source equals the URL that we have just copied. And let's close the script element, save the changes and now when we reload this page the script error should go away. Notice that the script error is gone and when we click this button we should get the alert jQuery tutorial. At the moment our application is loading the jQuery file from the Microsoft CDN server. So what are the benefits of using CDN? There are several benefits. Distributed CDN servers. The jQuery file can be downloaded from the CDN server that is closest to the user. Let's say we have a web application and we hosted that in a server that is in the United States and let's say we have a client from India. Now when this client access a page within your application all the resources required by that page that is the images, CSS files, jQuery files, all these files need to be downloaded from the server that is there in the uni uh, United States. Now let's say our application is actually loading the jQuery from a CDN server now what is a CDN? It's a system of distributed servers. So there are loads of CDN servers across the globe. So there could be a CDN server in India as well. So when the same user requests the page from your application, since there is a CDN server in, the, in India, you know, the jQuery file can be downloaded from the CDN server that is in India, which is closest to your client and that means you know your page load times can be improved because you know it's being downloaded from a server that is closest to the user so that's going to improve the download time which in turn improves your page load time the other benefit is browser caching jquery is used on many popular websites if a user has already visited a web page that uses jquery from a cdn and then if he arrives at your page the jQuery file has already been cached by the browser, so there is no need to download it again. Parallel downloads. There is a browser limit on how many files can be downloaded from a given domain. This number varies from browser to browser. For example, if the browser allows only two concurrent downloads from a given domain, the third download is blocked until one of the previous files has been fully downloaded. Since the jQuery file is on a CDN, it is bound being downloaded from a different domain. So this means the browser allows another two parallel downloads from the CDN server. Reduced server load. The HTTP request for jQuery file is handled by the CDN server. So the load on your web server is reduced. 
this also means there is a saving on your website bandwidth consumption which in turn will reduce your hosting cost. There is one disadvantage that we need to keep in mind. Now your client firewalls may block the CDN. So you may have to request your clients to whitelist the CDN. And this is especially true when you are switching the CDN provider. Now when you have initially developed your application, let's say you're using Microsoft CDN and you told your clients about the CDN domain name, so the clients have unblocked their firewalls for that domain name. Now all of a sudden because of some um, you know, technical issue, you may want to switch to another CDN provider. Now when you do that, you will have to tell your clients about that new CDN provider because if it is not whitelisted, the firewalls may block that CDN provider. As a result, the jQuery file will not be loaded and your application may not work. Now, what if the required jQuery file cannot be downloaded from CDN? Let's assume that either the CDN is down or because of some network issue, we are not able to download jQuery from CDN. In this case, we will have to fall back gracefully to use the jQuery file that we have hosted on our own web server. So let's see how to do that. So at the moment, if you look at our application, we are loading the jQuery file from a CDN server. Now, let's write code to fall back gracefully to these, this jQuery file that we have hosted within our application in case you know we are not able to load it from the CDN server. So vendor dot jQuery or I'm going to use document dot write and we are actually going to write a script element here. So script source equals this jQuery file. So I have that within the single quotes here and then we need to close the angular bracket and we need to close the script element itself. So open the angular bracket forward slash and close the script element. Now this forward slash has got a special meaning so we need to escape that and the escape character is backslash so let's use that. So what is this line of code doing here? Now what is this jQuery property on the window object? If jQuery file is successfully loaded Okay, now it's going to add this jQuery property to the window object. Okay, so window.jQuery. If jQuery property is present on the window object, that means the jQuery file is successfully uh, loaded. Okay, and look at this. This is an OR condition. If this condition is true, then it's not going to execute this piece of code. Okay, so if the jQuery file is downloaded, you know, it's not going to execute this. If jQuery file is not downloaded, then this property is not going to be there. So it's going to execute this one. And look at what it's doing. It's actually referring to the script file that is present within our application. Okay. At the moment, my internet is working. So that means this script file can be loaded from the CDN server. Let me go ahead and turn off my internet. Okay. So the internet is turned off now. Let's actually try to navigate to google.com. Look at that, uh, unable to connect to the internet. Now, when I load this page, we shouldn't get any error. And when I click this, we should get the alert. Now, since I'm not able to connect to the internet, it's actually not able to load this jQuery file from the CDN server. So it's falling back to this jQuery file that is present within our application. Thank you for listening and have a great day.